Hello, this is Chiak, and we are playing Detective D, The Silk Rose Murders. Now, as in terms of uh, Chinese literary pop culture figures, I really don't know much about the, the Detective D. Um, I think the first time I ever heard of Detective D was when I saw a movie trailer, most likely based on the various, I don't know if they're short stories or or just long anthology type crime stories. I really don't know much about this, but it, the name has popped up enough for me to know that it is uh, some literary, liter literary figure of prominence in Chinese culture. Or I would assume. So either way, let's get going with this. This is a work of fiction. While based on real historical subjects, all characters and events are depicted in a fictitious manner. Diplomatic Memes Peng Lai Tang, Tang Dynasty China The messenger said I would find an officer standing guard. This must be the right place. Assuming I just click to continue. Okay. Okay, so the controls is by mouse. Guard. I'm assuming there's no space to look at. <laughs> Guardian lion. These mythic creatures are meant to protect this house. I have a feeling they may have faltered tonight. Uh, just seeing if there's anything else. Okay, it's only the guard. We can look at the guard and we can talk. I don't know why, but this looks terrifying. <laughs> he must be the officer the messenger spoke of. My name is Detector Di Renjie. I am the newly appointed investigating magistrate of Peng Lai. A messenger was sent to fetch me only 30 minutes ago. He named Foreign Minister Wang Hua as his employer. By the way, if I say anything wrong, like, I just don't know what the tones are for, in terms of pronunciation, so it's like making up as I go. <laughs> I understand I'm meant to help with an urgent matter. You're the new investigating magistrate. Hmm. Excuse my bluntness, but I was expecting, I wasn't expecting someone so young. You have a keen eye. I've just recently completed my studies in the capital, and this is my first appointment as a country magistrate. But in my time in the capital, I gained invaluable experience, serving as secretary of the Imperial Archives, and as assistant to the Imperial Counselor before that. But I believe the minister requested my presence urgently. We must not keep him waiting. Of course, apologies for my indiscretion. But on a night like this, one can't be too careful. I am Sergeant Feng Cheng Long, Long, Minister Wang's private guard. Please, may I see some proof of your title? Shouldn't you have asked that before? If you're so suspicious of him being young, just ask for his, the proof of his title. <laughs> okay. Do I... How do I... Uh... Ah, here we go. Ah. Okay, so we go up and ba bam. Oh. Oh, here we go. Okay, so I have to click on it. Grab and giveth thee to. I'm sorry, I forgot your name already. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Magistrate D. The minister is waiting for you in the entrance courtyard. It's interesting that the movie I was talking about, where I first was, I guess, introduced to this character. They spell it as D-E-E, -E, and I'm assuming that's just for... the easier for English language speakers, because they won't they won't see D-I, and you can, well, they might try to pronounce it in many number of ways. Frank Gates, all right. Mr. Wang Wa. 
That must be Foreign Minister Wang. I heard he was appointed by the Emperor himself. Oh, okay. He is a powerful man. Why would he seek my assistance at this hour? No doubt's a matter of life and death. I fear the worst. Okay, let's have a chat. You must be Minister Wang. And you must be De Renjie, the new magistrate of our little coastal district. I wish we could have met under less dire circumstances. I understand you've only been at your new post for two weeks. The minister is well informed. I've only begun to settle into my new station. The area is still quite new to me. In truth, I've only visited the military fort so far. This compound, on the other hand, I did not know existed. Indeed, this estate was built just recently to serve only the most exclusive guests of the Empire. Its existence is strictly on a need-to-know basis. <laughs> so it appears you put me in a privileged position, but why? Of that, you are correct, young magistrate. But one word of advice. That position you speak of is fraught with danger. Knowledge, after all, comes at a price. But you seem keen enough. Good? Good. I thought... Uh, sorry. You seem keen enough. Good. I shall start from the beginning. As you know, this district borders a coastal region that is under constant threat by the Korean Navy. I was sent here and tasked to conduct secret negotiations with my Korean counterpart, Ambassador Choi. The Emperor himself summoned me to, del to help deliver his proposed border treaty, a move that would undoubtedly help him regain favor in the eyes of the court and the kingdom. Needless to say, there are factions that would love nothing more than to see the Emperor fail. Huthern Emperor... <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's deal with the problem first. The kingdom is prosperous. Who would dare defy the Emperor? The Imperial Court is full of usurpers waiting for their chance to strike. That is why this treaty is more than a simple diplomatic calculation. Its symbolic value is immeasurable. The Emperor must show his strength, now more than ever. Or, I'm afraid his legacy will end badly. Are you suggesting that the Emperor's enemies are now on the move? Are on the move? Of that, there is no doubt. If 30 years in the Imperial Court has taught me anything, it is that no Emperor can truly rest. Night after night, he lies awake, anticipating the next shadow. His enemies are too numerous, too persistent. Okay, no matter what, we have to... All, conversa all conversation points have to be done. My father served under our majest majesty. He is a capable and beloved ruler. Your father served a young and vibrant man. Today, the emperor is an old and feeble leader, a mere shadow of his former self. As his health wanes, his wife, Wu Zintian, grows with influence. As his favors falls, Consort Wu gains power behind the curtains. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, politics. <laughs> and what of you, Master, Ma Minister Wang? Where do you stand? Barely five months ago, I was still enjoying the life of a retired official. But who refuses the emperor? Clearly, he needed an outsider like me for the job, a loyalist unlikely to be influenced by his detractors. Yet tonight, I stand at the precipice, looking clumsily at the bottom of the ravine. Perhaps you can save me? Now, come with me. Okay, I'm going to assume. <laughs> Moments later, on the far side of the compound, my goodness, how big is this compound? Oh boy. <laughs> the unfortunate man you see before you is Choi Yong Jun. I also do not know how to pronounce Korean names. A Korean ambassador to China. Tonight was meant to be a triumphant victory. But fate has a cruel way of shuffling the deck, just as you begin to believe in your own destiny. 
Tell me what happened. Ambassador Choi and I had been meeting here secretly for weeks. Our work on the treaty was almost complete, and we arranged to meet this evening to finalize it. It started innocently enough. Choi and his private guard arrived in time for supper as usual. After a light meal, our business began in earnest over some jasmine tea. Jess is a had many times before. But what follows is a terrible blur. I remember suddenly becoming very dizzy. Moments later, I felt myself resting my head on the table before me, closing my eyes and unable to open them again. When I woke up, it felt like I had slept for hours. Someone must have witnessed this. That was my hope, but when I, when I interrogated the others, all had the same answer. Unconscious, each and every one. That's troubling. And Choi, he was gone. No one knew what happened to him, so I ordered an immediate search of the entire estate. We looked everywhere. In the end, it was his private guard who found him here, murdered in cold blood. Apparently, the ambassador had previously commented on how peaceful this waterfall made him feel. Is that ironic? I don't know if that's ironic, but... <laughs> Unless you mean a rest in peace kind of way? I um, don't know if that's ironic. Either way, how tragic. It is hard to deny the serenity of this place. May he rest in peace. Let me remind you that if we do not find a suitable explanation for the ambassador's death, tonight's events could create a rift between our two nations that no, no diplomatic means could mend. That is why we must solve this case tonight, or the consequences will be grave for all of us. Yes, of course. I shall start my investigation. Has anyone been allowed to leave the premises? I should hope not, but anyway, no, I've ordered everyone to stay until this matter is resolved. I myself walked to the nearby military outpost to request a messenger be sent for you. Otherwise, none have been permitted to step outside of this gate gated compound. Very well. I shall interview each person and search the area for clues. All right. <laughs> Achievement first case. Let's get started. There's a used candle. It looks like a partially used candle. Pick up. A used candle. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, looks like a hat. Okay, before I pick up the hat. His body is partially underwater. If any forensic evidence existed, it's likely been washed away. Okay, so... Pick up the hat. Bloody cap belonging to the ambassador. I won't be able to rely on an autopsy, so I need to examine him carefully. Examine his head. The back of his head has a spat smashed in by a narrow, jagged object, likely killing him on impact. Hmm, something is tucked under his shirt. We got ourselves a silk handkerchief with the ambassador's seal. No defensive wounds or any signs of a struggle. Could he have known his attacker? Some footprints are still visible at the edge of the water. Curiously, it seems he was facing away from his attacker when the assault happened. Okay. The blow to his head was fatal, but why was he facing away from his killer? I need to find a murder weapon. Unless he was threatened or carried here, it seems the ambassador came on his own volition. But why? Perhaps he knew the killer. Okay, is there anything else here? That's just out. His gaze is fixated on the ambassador's lifeless body. He still wears a look of disbelief. Okay, anything else? Anything else we gotta talk? Yes, how can I help? Uh, ooh, whoa, okay. Didn't we already go over this? Why did you ask for me? As the investigating magistrate of this district, you are responsible for all matters of law and order. 
there arise within its borders. As such, you are judge, jury, prosecutor, and detective. Notwithstanding the secret nature of these meetings, you alone have the jurisdic jurisdiction to investigate and solve this case. And by the heavens, I hope you do. Can you please, can you tell me more about this compound and the people present tonight? This compound is comprised of a small house and a private garden, which itself surrounds this waterfall. When in use, it is attended to by a staff of three, a house steward, a cook, and a maidservant. The ambassador and I each have a private bodyguard who remain by our sides at all times. Where are they now? You met my guard at the front gate. Ambassador Choi's guard is standing outside this very cave. The house steward is like is trying to keep himself busy in the main courtyard. And you'll find the cook and the maidservant in the house. Okay, so three, five, technically six people, I guess. Any idea how you were rendered unconscious? Sleeping drop? Yeah, I was gonna say. Some sort of sleeping inducing sleep inducing drug, I imagine. At first I thought our food might have been tampered with. But since dinner was served only to the ambassador and I, this would hardly explain why the others succumbed as well. After waking, I examined the candles that were lit earlier in the evening, and judging by their condition, it seems we passed out for just half an hour. Yet the remarkable thing is, if all accounts are true, everyone in the house passed out at the same time. Okay. Hmm. When I worked as secretary of the Imperial Archives, I once read of a case in which a powerful sleeping gas was introduced into a closed room. All within it were knocked out minutes later. If what you say is true, it's highly possible a similar method was used here. As a matter of fact, at the time of dinner, all doors and windows were indeed closed. Okay. What happened before you passed out? Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? I've replayed the events leading up to his disappearance over and over, but alas, nothing suspicious comes to mind. Were you the first to regain consciousness? No. The house steward and Choi's guards were already awake. They claimed to have come to two only moments earlier. The others woke shortly after I did. Who knew about these secret meetings? For obvious reasons, the people presently here all have some degree of knowledge about the meetings themselves. But the Emperor himself is the only one who knows the nature of the work the Ambassador and I were engaged in. The treaty was only to be made public after we finalized it. <sighs> Evidently, we, are not ca we were not cautious enough. What is so important about this treaty? Our work here would have ensured a decade of prosperity between, between our two nations. Who do you think that benefits the most? The Koreans? No. They have no stomach for war against our empire in the first place. Make no mistake, our emperor is the one who would have gained the most from this agreement, allowing him to recapture the hearts and minds of people in the twilight of his reign. But he will be the one paying most dearly for its failure. Like vultures circling a weak prey, his enemies will advance. Mark my words. You have much to learn, young magistrate. We live in uncertain times. Each move we make now either secures the empire or pre precipitates its demise. <coughs> Maybe I should change his voice because his voice is not easy on my throat. Her cause is drying this much sooner. Okay. <coughs> oh my god. Do you have any reason to suspect anyone here? I wish I could say I do. But to my knowledge, no one here had any motive to kill him. To your knowledge? <coughs> I will investigate further. Sorry, where is my... There we go. God, good. I will be in the sitting room if you need me. Alright. So... Obviously, the first person we can talk to would be Choi's bodyguard. I need to inspect the crime scene. 
evidence more closely before I leave. What? We're still inspecting. Or, or is it like... A handkerchief, handkerchief made of expen expensive silk. The ambassador's seal is embroidered into the bottom right corner. A fitted imperial cap worn by high-ranking Korean officials. It, there appears to be a small bulge on the inside. <gasps> hmm, the secret pocket is sewn into the lining. There is a small piece of folded paper inside. Okay. Before we do that... Do we, like, compare the candle to the candles inside? Assuming... I mean, if they're still going, then probably not, but... How long will this charade go on? You will not get rid of me so easily. I will have my answer tonight. Was someone threatening the ambassador? Okay. Okay, whoa. Solve Ambassador Choi's murder. Collect evidence to fill out this deduction board. There's a deduction board. Find the found the letter in Choi's cap and learned of a potential threat. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. And including this would be six altogether. How do we get to the deduction board? I do. You... No? Okay. Now can we go? Aha! Captain. Bay? Bai? I don't know how to pronounce your name, I'm sorry. The death of his master will undoubtedly carry severe consequences upon his return to Korea. Yeah. My name is. Di Renjie. I am in charge of this investigation. Are you Ambassador Choi's military guard? Yes, sir. I am Captain... <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, how am I supposed to... If someone in the comment can tell me how to pronounce this guy's name, either way, I maybe have to look it up later, but... <sighs> bye? I'm going to say bye for now, and then I'll look it up later. Yes, sir. I am Captain Bai of the Korean Royal Guard. But there is no need for any further formalities. I do not wish to speak to any Chinese officials until an investigative team from my country is present. Okay. What do you mean? Why should I trust a Chinese detective when it is under Chinese care that the ambassador has been assassinated? Do you think me that naive? Yeah, that's not good. I need your help in order to solve this case. Your testimony may contain vital clues. You need my help? What protection did you offer my master? How did you help him? I understand your reservations, but if we do not act tonight, the trail may be lost, and we may lose our only chance to apprehend the killer. How can we just do nothing and wait? I... I will make a bargain with you. Show me that you are truly here to find the truth. Show me your skills as an investigator, and I will cooperate and answer your questions. Very well, you have a deal. I will return when I have uncovered more about the case. I shall expect your cooperation. Out of curiosity, if we show him, like, the letter, is he gonna... Will he, like, know something? Okay, yeah, it's thought. Hollow tree. <gasps> is there something inside? Something seems to be stuck inside the tree. The tree trunk. The objects that the object that's lodged in there is just beyond my grasp. I'll need something to extend my reach. Eh. Okay. Um. Stone lantern. I don't there's anything else here. Okay. We can. These large stone lanterns help illuminate the garden. Okay. So we need to find more evidence in order to convince. Uh. Of, of, uh, of security guard by a rag. Okay, cherry blossoms, stone bench. Obviously, the first one we can see here is the rag. Steward's song. From the looks of it, this lovely cherry blossom was in full bloom just days ago. Yes, my lovely view. 
This is exactly what we should paint. Listen, any clue, guys? <laughs> a stone bench perfectly placed for taking in the sun on warm summer days. Okay, let's look at this rag. What is this evidence? A piece of cloth has been dropped on the ground. It's a rag coated with some kind of herbal oil. I can't quite identify the herb, but it has a minty aroma. Okay. His blank expression suggests a man looking for a distraction, but sweeping the floor doesn't seem to be helping. All right. Are you the steward of this estate? Yes, sir. And you must be De Renjie, the detective Mr. Wang spoke of. I'm Song Yu Ming. I manage this small staff that cares for this compound and its guests. It's a relief to see you here, sir. Perhaps now we can find out what really happened here tonight. That is my hope also. Can you tell me how the night unfolded? Dreadfully, sir. Not in a hundred years could I imagine such terror. We thought this place was safe, untouchable even. But those notions were quickly smashed to bits tonight. Go on. Well, I was in the kitchen when it happened. I was overseeing the plating of some desserts with Chef with Chef Chu when, for no apparent reason, he just tumbled to the ground like a large sack of rice. I bent down to assist him, but suddenly my vision became blurry and my legs felt weak. My weight pulled me to the floor and that was that. I was out cold. Later, when I came to and saw that Chu was still on the ground, I checked to see if he was still alive, which he was. I knew then that I had to run to the sitting room where I suspected the others had suffered a similar fate, or worse. And there they were, all unconscious except for the ambassador's bodyguard. As I looked at him standing over his master's seat, it was at that moment that I realized the ambassador was missing. Did you wake the others? No, I didn't want to risk it. Who knows what kind of poison we had been subjected to. But there was no need. Only moments later, they all started waking up one by one. Once Mr. Wong became fully aware of the situation, he immediately ordered us to search the premises for Ambassador Choi. I was shocked as everyone else when his own guard found him dead in the garden grotto. What manner of sorcery could have lured him into that cave? That is indeed a vital question. But for now... I mean, if, if, he, if his bodyguard was supposed to know his whereabouts, then... And the Ambassador continuously went to the cave. It, kind of, it makes sense, I would assume. Anyway, tell me about yourself and your staff. Well, the staff here is small, but we manage. Chef Chu and I have been working here since the beginning. Sun Ying, the maidservant, came on board last spring. We had to replace the first maidservant because her mother was sick, and she wanted to return home to take care of her. The rules and routines here are very strict. With all the secrecy and all, so there's little room for error or improvisation. And tonight was no exception. How did you prepare for tonight? Did everything go according to plan? Yes, sir. Our preparations were meticulous as always. We first greeted Mr. Wong, followed by the ambassador shortly after sundown. I set the tables and lit the evening candles and we promptly began serving supper and then tea. That's when I headed back into the kitchen to help prepare the desserts. Well, you know what happened next. Did anyone else eat besides the minister and the ambassador? No, sir. The staff isn't allowed to eat long after the guests have left. Isn't allowed to eat until long after the guests have left. They've been instructed to eat before they arrive here, so it's usually not a concern. Same goes for the bodyguard. And am I right to assume that all the food is prepared on site? That's right, sir. Everything is prepared here by Ch by Chef Chu. I don't know why this alliteration having make it makes it's making it giving me a hard time saying this guy's name. Chef Chu, we don't allow any food from the outside. You said you lit the candles in the house at the start of the evening. What kind of candles do you use? Ah. For that, you'll have to ask Sun Ying, maidservant. She manages our candle supply. 
And did anyone change or handle the candles after you initially lit them this evening? No, sir. Our candles usually last well into the night. Even now, they still burn in the house. <laughs> Why are you sweeping? Under the circumstances, the minister has surely given you leave of your regular duties. Uh, uh, yes, sir. This is just for me. Or rather, for my nerves. Keeping busy helps me stay relaxed. Besides, after all these years doing this job, I'm not used to sitting and waiting. Old habits die hard, I guess. Thank you. I'll leave you to your work. It's no trouble, sir. And he goes back to sweeping. Alright, any more things to look at? No? Let's go talk to more people. Okay, there's Mr. Wong. Wang Wa. Oh, here's the other painted vase, vase, depending on whatever pronunciation you want to go for. A fine painted vase featuring a dancing dragon. Okay, that's to the kitchen. That is a fancy candle bra. Anyway, they look like ordinary candles. Mr. Song said the maidservant Swoon Ying is responsible for the candle supply. I don't have the means to analyze the contents of the meal that was served here. For now, I'll need to rely purely on instinct and deduction. Is there anything else I can look at? Table, the minister. <coughs> He's going to say the same thing, yeah, okay. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. All the talking. Is this the maidservant? Okay. Frankly, I think she looks rather fancy, dr fancily dressed, but this is <laughs> 8 bit. <laughs> so, an antique vase, or a pixel art, I should say. An antique vase. Judging by its style and shape, this piece may date as far back as the Zhou dynasty. Okay, Sun Ying, let's uh, have a chat. Her hands are trembling like the others. The night seems to have taken a toll. Nonetheless, her rare beauty is quite striking. I am Magistrate Di Renjie. I'd like to ask you some questions. Yes, sir, of course. My name is Sun Ying. I am the maidservant. I'd like to hear your account of what happened tonight. Can you take me back to the beginning? Well, it all happened so fast. I remember the minister and the ambassador arriving one after the other, just, just after nightfall. I remember them settling into the sitting room. The minister sat here against the wall, and the ambassador was over there to his left. We began the dinner service soon after that. Later, I remember Mr. Song saying he was going into the kitchen to check on the desserts, and that's when things took a terrible turn. One moment I was serving tea, the next I was lying on the floor confused and disorientated. When I realized we had been drugged and that the ambassador had been killed, I was so afraid. I didn't know what to think. All I know is that he didn't deserve to die that way. But our destinies are often beyond our own control. We bend and break at the mercy of a higher power. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't mean to ramble on. No need to apologize. What's taken place here tonight would unnerve the best of us. Thank you for your kind words. I hope you find the person who did this and bring them to justice. Tell me about yourself. I'm just a simple servant girl. Have been since I was little. My parents died when I was very young, so I had to learn to fend for myself. I'm sorry to hear that. Are you treated well here? That I am, sir, very well. Mr. Wang is a good man. And Mr. Song, he's very demanding, but I've never known him to be unreasonable. But now that this has happened, I wonder if they'll continue to let us work here. 
How did you end up working here? I applied to an agency. They put my name on a waiting list and told me they'd contact me if anything came up. I heard the girl who worked here before me had to leave because she had to take care of her sick mother. I guess I was just next in line. After that, I was happy to pay them their finder's fee. Who supplies the candles that are used throughout the house? I buy a new batch every week from a local candle maker. I don't remember his name, sir, but everybody in town buys their candles from his shop. Did you notice anything different about the latest batch? No, sir. They looked and smelled the same to me. They're just plain unscented candles. I'd like to examine any leftovers you may have. Where do you keep them? Um, yes, of course. They're stored in a small lockbox in the storage room. Here's the key. Okay. Then we go. Oh, I was hope I hope I was of some help. Okay. Let's head to the kitchen before courtyard entrance. Chef Oh my god. Chef Chu. Onions, ginger, garlic, the usual assortments of dried vegetables. You can see the chili peppers. That I recognize. The board, what's that? A board detailing the week's menu. The only noteworthy thing is how well organized the staff is. Desserts? What's for dessert? Assorted desserts. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Oh, you did tell me. I want to know. It looks like the chef's been drinking wine. And that's it? Oh, we can use this on the log. A pair of tongs used to handle the charcoal that feeds the stove. Yes, grab it. Gimme. These might come in handy. We know they will. <laughs> we know they will. A brick stove. The coal inside is still warm. Okay. He seems oddly relaxed. Oh boy, how do I do his voice? Are you the chef? <laughs> what, what voice do I use for this? Yes, sir. Chef, choose a name. You must be the detective. Yes, I am Dirinjia. I'm the newly appointed investigate, ah, the new investigating magistrate of Peng Lai. I've heard of you. Is that so? Yes, my cousin Sing is the cook at the military fort. He told me all about your recent visits there. He even told me he prepared his specialty pork dumplings. Be but between you and me, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if you've had better. That cousin of mine, he's always been a bragger. Uh, you seem strangely undisturbed by tonight's events. Sh <laughs> Chef Chu, tell me, have you been drinking wine? <laughs> well, I suppose I did have a sip of wine here or there. It's been such a long and stressful night. I was just trying to calm my nerves a little. <coughs> I see. And do you think you f you're fit enough to answer a few questions? <coughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why that made me laugh. Yay, investigating potentially inebriated witnesses. Fit enough, huh? I'd wager I'm the sharpest one here, sir. You needn't worry. One second. Fire away. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> what were you doing before you fell unconscious? Let's see. I was standing over there, playing those custard tarts. Mr. Song was standing right beside me. I swear that man wouldn't know the difference between a tart and a pie if his life depended on it. Don't get me wrong, he's a hard-working man in everything, but he doesn't know heads from tails in the kitchen. Well, anyway, it was around then I, that I started feeling dizzy, like I was in a drunken haze, but without the drinking. I think I must have blacked out after that. The last thing I remember is the distinct metallic smell in the air. Regrettably, I passed out before I could identify it. You think you could have identified it? Didn't I tell you? At the risk of sounding boastful, I am blessed with a nose, or should I say a precise instrument, capable of recognizing any ingredient only by its scent. In culinary school, they used to call me the hound. One whiff of sm someone's breath, and I could tell them the contents of their last meal. Would you like to give it a try? 
<laughs> sure. I don't see why not. We need proof. <laughs> hmm. It smells like you had some steamed chicken. <laughs> Prepared with ginger and chives, am I right? That's correct. It's quite a talent you have there, Chef, Chef Chu. <laughs> I knew a man like you could appreciate such refined senses. If you would like me to demonstrate it again, feel free to bring me anything from the slightest, with the slightest hint of an aroma, and I'll identify the source. <gasps> I know, I know something. I'll give it to you later. That sounds quite useful. I'll keep that in mind. What can you tell me about tonight's dinner service? The minister prefers his meals light and simple, and tonight's menu was no different. I first prepared a sweet duck soup, followed by some fried fish cakes and white rice. The custard tarts were next, but as it turns out, we never got around to serving those. Do you prepare all the food yourself? Of course. Unlike my cousin who relies on his assistance, I don't let anyone else touch my food. Tell me about yourself. You want to know about me? <laughs> I see where this is going. I suppose we're all suspects here, aren't we? No need to be tactful around me. No need to be tactful around me, sir. I know how this works. You pretend your questions are harmless and routine, while all along setting a trap for the unsuspecting wrongdoer. Isn't that right? <laughs> There's nothing routine about an investigation into the murder of a high-ranking diplomat. Now, Chef Chu, either you start taking this seriously, or I detain you in our fine jailhouse for wrongdoers until you start sobering up. Uh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. I was just jesting. I didn't mean to offend. It must be the wine. I'm not usually this talkative. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, as I was saying, I came from a long line of chefs, four generations, if you can believe it. I've been a chef now for 16 years, and that's exactly two more than my older cousin Singh. In recent years, I have settled for working for the Imperial Court, going wherever they ask. The pay is a little better, and I don't mind the traveling. A bachelor's life has its perks, you know? <laughs> okay. Do you have any theories about the murder? It's those damned revolutionaries. They're plotting to overthrow the Empire. I just know it. They have eyes and ears everywhere. My cousin Singh, he thinks I'm crazy. Doesn't think the throne is vulnerable. But that's exactly the kind of thinking that will get you in trouble. You wouldn't happen to have any proof of these conspiracy theories, would you? Proof? Huh. I... Well, not exactly. You see... It's more of a gut feeling than anything else. All these years cooking for scholars, aristocrats, and officers, one picks up on these things. I see. Well, unless your gut can muster up some actual evidence relating to the situation at hand, I'd rather we leave those grand theories for another day. Uh, <coughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Are you asking about his cousin? Why? You seem quite fond of your... Cousin Singh. <laughs> Quite fond, right? Fond of him? <laughs> you must be joking. He's been a nuisance all my life. He's more like a rival, a nemesis. Uh... <sighs> Who am I kidding? Singh's the only family I've got. A true friend. Wait, you're not going to tell him I said that, are you? You, you can't. You mustn't, or I won't hear the end of it. No need to worry. I won't tell a soul. That's all for now, thank you. That's not all for now, because later, in the next set, I will be making him sniff this rag. Either way, I'm going to have to end the set here. So, thank you for liking if you like. Thank you for commenting if you commented. Thank you for subscribing if you subscribed. Thank you for favoriting if you favorited. Thank you for simply clicking on this video. Until next time, guys. See ya!